Good evening, I'm David Kramer here with the Alaska Weather Show. As always, please visit our website at weather.gov slash Alaska. You can check out any watches, warnings, advisories that we have out for the state. You can also get any updates to our forecast. And you can call our weather info line at 1-800-472-0391. Get any updates to the forecast through that means as well. And you can also give us an email at the address at the bottom of the screen. Starting off, we'll take a quick look at the advisory that we do have out for the state. Just one, and it is a wind advisory that is out for the upper Kobuk and Noatak valleys and primarily for areas north of Shungnak and that is in effect from 6 a.m. on Thursday until noon on Friday. Taking a look now at our satellite imagery starting off way to the west we do have a low pressure system in front that are near the central Aleutian Islands bringing some rain to the area but that system is quickly moving to the south and dying out. As we look further to the east we have an area of multiple lows that's out kind of in the southern gulf there with one low going towards Kodiak another bringing some rain to the southern part of the panhandle another one further south than those we do have another low really weak low over the northeastern part of the state bringing some snow out there and then as we move back towards the west we do have one area of low pressure out kind of over the northern part of the Bering Sea bringing some snow to areas over there Taking a look now for our weather for the remainder of the day, we do have our frontal system just to the south of the Aleutian Islands before that breaks down, but still bringing in some rain to the eastern and central Aleutians. Our low out over the Bering, bringing some snow showers out to the western part of the Bering Sea. As we move over mainland part of the state, we have a low near Kodiak Island, bringing rain to that area as well as along the north Gulf Coast into the Prince William Sound area. Some rain in the Alaska Range, maybe some snow at some of the higher elevations, but primarily rain for the areas, especially around Lake Iliamna. And then as we move further to the west into the Bristol Bay area, seeing some rain out there as well. Up along the coastline, not a lot of activity until we get by the Bering Strait coast where we are seeing some areas of blowing snow. That's going to be true up by Point Hope as well. And then along the Arctic coastline near the Barrow area, we are seeing some areas of fog. Our week low over the eastern part of the Brooks Range, bringing some snow to the area. And then we do have some snow in some of the higher elevations like the Alaska Range, Talkeetna Mountains, and Wrangell St. Elias with rain as we get further towards the surface. And then as we go down into the Panhandle area, we have some rain in the very southern portions, but seeing some nicer weather in the central and northern parts of the Panhandle. Moving into tonight, we are going to have some of those showers spread further into areas around the Panhandle, but should be pretty light. And then as we get to areas a little bit more inland, we are going to see that mixing with some snow. Along the rest of the Gulf Coast, we aren't going to see a lot until we get to the eastern part of the Kenai Peninsula, where that easterly flow is going to bring some rain showers to the area. And our low pressure down by Kodiak Island going to bring rain to Kodiak Island down through the Alaska Peninsula and starting to get a little bit colder as we get closer towards the YK Delta transitioning conditions over to snow extending up into the lower Kuskokwim Valley as well. Then up in the northern part of the state and just by the uh, central Brooks Range and further off to the east we are going to see some snow up there and then we are going to have some blowing snow conditions all along the Arctic coastline down by the Point Hope Point Lay areas and then down through the Bering Strait towards St. Lawrence Island for tonight. As we look out over the Bering Sea we have our weak low in the central to northern part of the Bering Sea bringing some snow showers to those areas down through the Aleutian Islands as well bringing in some of that colder air from the north and then we have a new system coming in from the west primarily going to bring rain but it's going to start out with snow with some of the colder temperatures ahead of that warm front. As we move into Thursday we can see that warm front pushing further in towards the western Aleutian Islands transitioning that snow over to rain when that warmer air starts to move in. We are going to see some warmer conditions out over the central and eastern Aleutian Islands even though it's still that northerly flow starting to warm up in those afternoon hours bringing some rain showers to those locations but further to the north still cold enough to bring some snow showers. So look out over southwest Alaska, our low still sitting here just south of Kodiak Island, bringing rain to all of those areas around Kodiak, the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay area, and some areas up by the YK Delta as well. So you get a little bit further north, we are going to see some snow showers coming into the Unalakleet area and up further to the north as well, extending up into the Brooks Range and up along the northeastern part of the coastline. 
However, as we get further to the west, we are going to see some blowing snow conditions by Barrow along the coast and down through the Bering Strait once again on Thursday. Down in south central Alaska, that southeasterly flow bringing up some rain to the eastern parts of the Kenai Peninsula and to the Alaska Range. As we get further to the east in the Wrangell St. Elias and some of the coastal ranges, we are going to see some rain and snow mix there. And then down in the panhandle with that southerly flow seen, rain primarily along the coastline, but as we get to more inland locations, a little bit colder there, expecting some of that to mix with snow. And speaking of some of those stronger winds, we had that wind warning out for the southern part of the Panhandle, and we did have a wind gust to 112 miles per hour at Ketchikan Harbor yesterday. As we move into Friday, we do have our low over the eastern part of the Gulf, bringing in some rain to the Panhandle area, except for those very far northern places such as Haines and Skagway should stay out of the rain. Yakutat is going to see rain on Friday, and as we get into the south central and the Copper River Basin area, and primarily out further to the east, we will see a mixture of rain and snow in the basin itself, probably mostly rain, but as we get to some of the mountain range, is going to see more snow. Going up into the Alaska Range and places of the interior, you're going to see similar situation where low-lying areas should see rain, but we are going to see some snow further uh, in higher elevation areas. But as we get further north, all should be snow along that eastern part, moving up into the upper Yukon Valley. Up along the Arctic coastline, going to be pretty calm up there as high pressure pushes in from the west. And then we will have through the Bering Strait area, our last lingering areas of blowing snow, and then some new snow down around Gamble and out into the Nome area. Down around the Alaska Peninsula, we are going to have northerly flow bringing showers, rain showers to those areas all throughout the peninsula and down into the eastern Aleutian Islands. And then our system coming in from the west, bringing up a lot of warm air, bringing rain to the central and western Aleutian Islands. Taking our look at our low temperatures, starting with Thursday morning, we do have temperatures dropping to just above freezing for the Aleutian Islands mid-30s for the Alaska Peninsula, mid-30s for the Bristol Bay area as well, below freezing for the YK Delta area. No, I'm going to go down to 12 degrees tonight, around 10 degrees for the Kotzebue area, Shishmaref also at 10 degrees, and then along the Arctic coastline at or just below zero for many of the central and western locations. A little bit warmer out by Kaktovik, only dropping down to 6 degrees there. In the interior, dropping down into the mid to upper 20s, pretty much all throughout the interior. Down in south central Alaska, lower to mid 30s for the most part. A little bit colder there at Glen Allen, dropping down to 20 degrees. Cordova going down to 29. Then in the Panhandle area, mid 30s to upper 30s, warmer as we get further to the south and closer to the Gulf. Then on uh, Thursday afternoon, getting up into the upper 40s to just about 50, with Skagway getting up to 51 degrees tomorrow. Interior locations, the south central getting to the lower to mid 50s. Then in the interior, we're going to see mid 40s for the most part, getting a little bit colder as we get further off to the west. Galena at 40 degrees for our afternoon high Thursday. As we get north of the Brooks Range, only getting to the single digits again. Kaktovik staying a little bit warmer there at 14 degrees. Down in the Kotzebue area, we do have temperatures getting up into the upper teens. In the Norton Sound area, we do have temperatures in the mid to upper th or 20s, with Gamble getting up to 21 degrees. In the upper 30s to the mid to upper 40s for the YK Delta area, upper 40s for the Bristol Bay area, and right around 40 degrees for the Aleutian Islands. St. Paul getting up to 38 degrees. Friday morning, we have temperatures dropping back down to the mid 30s for the Aleutian Islands, 28 for St. Paul, into the mid 30s for the Bristol Bay area. Mid to upper 20s for the YK Delta area, colder to the north. Nome dropping down to 13 degrees. Single digits for the Kotzebue Sound area, and then below freezing all negative numbers along the Arctic coastline on Friday morning. In the 20s, as we in the western parts of the interior, and then getting up into right around 30 degrees as we get into eastern parts of the interior. Mid 30s for south central Alaska, and mid to upper 30s for the Panhandle. Moving into our afternoon highs on Friday afternoon, getting up to right around 50 degrees, again warmest as we get closer to the north. And then for the south central area, getting right about 50 degrees for many of those interior locations. A little bit colder there, Glen Allen 47 degrees for a high on Friday. Into the lower 40s for eastern parts of the interior, mid 30s to mid 40s for the western parts of the interior. Up along the Arctic coastline, single digits for the most part. Then the Kotzebue Sound area getting up around 20 degrees. Mid 20s for the Norton Sound area, mid 30s for the uh, YK Delta area, and right around 50 degrees for the Bristol Bay area. We will be back shortly with the aviation segment. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
For the Marines, we will start off looking at our flying weather charts. For a Thursday morning, we have widespread MVFR and IFR conditions for the Bering Sea. You can see the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, much of southwest Alaska as well. We have MVFR conditions throughout much of the mainland part of the state with some areas of IFR by the Kotzebue Sound area through the Brooks Range, way in the far eastern part of the state and some areas of the western part of the Arctic coastline. Down in south central Alaska, we have mixed areas of VFR and MVFR with a lot of those MVFR conditions along the Alaska range and down by the Kenai Peninsula. Then in the panhandle, we have a mix of MVFR and IFR conditions with some VFR further to the north. On Thursday morning, widespread MVFR conditions for the panhandle and some MVFR conditions along the north Gulf Coast as well with some of those areas sneaking into areas of the Copper River Basin. Then in the interior, southern portions should be VFR, but some MVFR conditions to the western parts of the interior and up in the northern part of the state. Along the west coast, we are expecting MVFR conditions Thursday afternoon. And then off the coastline and much of the Bering Sea, we have a lot of IFR conditions until we get to the southern part of the Bering Sea by the central Aleutian Islands. Should be clearing up a little bit there. Friday morning, widespread MVFR and IFR conditions for the Bering Sea, Aleutian Islands, and much of southwest Alaska as well. Some of those areas are going to be extending out over the interior part of the state with some IFR conditions extending through the interior out towards the eastern part of the state. And then in the south central area, we have some MVFR conditions with an area of VFR through much of the Cook Inlet corridor. Up along the Arctic coastline, MVFR conditions expected and down in the panhandle in the central and southern portions, we are expecting some MVFR conditions with VFR conditions further to the north. Friday afternoon, MVFR conditions spreading throughout the panhandle with some IFR conditions in the Gulf of Alaska. For south central southern areas and along the north Gulf Coast, we are expecting VFR conditions. But as we get further to the north in the Copper River Basin and throughout the Alaska Range, expecting MVFR conditions. More MVFR conditions expected for the interior part of the state until we get up by the Brooks Range where we are expecting conditions to clear out. And then some MVFR conditions along the Arctic Coast. Down the west coast of the state as we get into the YK Delta area, IFR conditions expected there. And that's going to extend down into the Pan or Alaska Peninsula as well. Then some MVFR and IFR conditions to the remainder of the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands. For our pass conditions, starting up north, Anaktivik Pass should be VFR throughout the day as well as adding in pass. We are expecting Lake Clark and Merrill to both start off in VFR and prove to VFR conditions in the afternoon. That will be true of Rainy Pass as well. Windy Pass, however, will stay in VFR throughout the day. Isabel Pass will start off marginal and prove to VFR conditions. And Mentasta Pass will also start off marginal and prove to VFR later in the day. Tanita Pass, however, will start off VFR and then drop down to marginal conditions in the afternoon. And Portage will stay in VFR throughout the day on Thursday. Chilkoot and White both starting off VFR and dropping down to MVFR later in the forecast period. For our freezing levels, we can see some warmer air trying to nose in by the Alaska Panhandle area with our surface freezing line right along the North Gulf Coast through Southwest Alaska, then out into the Bering Sea, and some areas of warmer air trying to extend over some of Southwest Alaska as well. For our icing starting off in the Panhandle area, between 1 and 6,000 feet expected there. Way up in the northeastern part of the state by the Fort Yukon area up towards Kaktovik, between 3,000 and 7,000 feet expected there. Over Kodiak Island, southwest Alaska, between 4,000 to 8,000 feet, extending out further to the west as well. But as we get down towards the eastern Aleutian Islands, Alaska Peninsula area, we are expecting above 1,000 feet there, in between 1 and 5,000 feet by the western Aleutians. For our jet stream, strongest portion of the jet going over the western Aleutian Islands at about 130 knots out of a westerly direction and digging off to the south. Weaker branch of the jet over southeast Alaska, 60 knots there. And then right over the Arctic coastline out of a westerly direction, 60 to 80 knots. Flight level winds, we have northerly flow out over the Bering Sea, 20 to 25 knots. And then as we drop down to the Aleutian Islands, 40 knots out of that westerly direction. Out over mainland Alaska, southerly flow, 15 to 25 knots. Easterly flow out over the northern part of the Gulf, 30 to 40 knots coming in over Kenai Peninsula and just off the coast by the Panhandle, 30 knots out of a southeasterly direction. There's some stronger winds, but dropping down pretty quickly as we start to move into the more inland areas. Down to 3,000 feet south to southeast flow, 20 to 30 knots again, strongest just off the coast. Stronger winds through the Barren Islands area, around 35 knots there, dropping down to around 20 over Kenai Peninsula. Then weaker flow through much of the rest of the southern part of the state, picking up out of a northeasterly direction, 40 to 50 knots along the northeast coast, and then northerly flow, 25 to 30 knots out over the Bering. For our turbulence, below 4,000 feet for the Aleutians, 4,000 feet for the northwest part of the state, and then 5, 000, below 5,000 feet by Kodiak Island. We'll be back shortly with the Marines.
Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right, Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to, to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be tough mm -hmm. to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say, mm -hmm. that this line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through 1,000 feet and above. That's your 1,000-foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1,200 feet, 1,400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, around the peak of a mountain. It kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, Imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what it, the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter Neil, the augmented huh? reality I like sandbox. It. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version. Sweet. Built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Velaji, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox. Oh, wow. And then okay. the Connect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, is that the sandbox and its Connect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the, uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox, too, is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill. Okay. And we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, into wow. that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if, what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go. The water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect, uh, Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a piece, wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. a lumpy topography there, the sand, but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right. piece right. of paper. Wow, that, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and absolutely hands-on way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a hands-on tool. And it's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened at GINA, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult 
<laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping is an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work with GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map, uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. exactly. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. Would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to the marine segment. We'll start off with a quick look at our ice edge. As expected this time of year, we do have a lot of the ice melting along the west coast of the state. But at this time, we still do have it going down to the Kuskokwim Bay area, past Macquarie and areas of Kipnik. But it is melting up through the area, and especially with the easterly flow, we've seen some more clearing in the far eastern portions of the Norton Sound and of the Kotzebue Sound area. For our main part of our marine forecast, starting down in southeast Alaska for Thursday, we do have primarily southeast flow, 20 to 25 knots in the Gulf, strongest further to the south, and then 15 to 25 knots in the inside waters, again strongest to the south. On Friday, we do have the very southern portions of the inside waters staying the same, southeasterly flow, 25 knots, but in the central and northern parts of the inside waters, flow shifting to become out of the north at 15 to 20 knots, with gustier winds south of Juneau up to as high as 35 knots. Out over the Gulf, we have southeasterly flow, 20 to 25 knots remaining, seas as high as 12 feet furthest to the south. For south central part of the state, in the Gulf here, we do have primarily easterly flow around 20 knots in the uh, Prince William Sound area, 20 knots there as well. Seas around 8 feet, getting up to as high as 9 feet as we get closer to the Barren Islands. And then flow in Cook Inlet, a primarily northerly direction, 15 to 20 knots there. Then on Friday, flow in Cook Inlet area out of the north, 10 to 15 knots. But out in the Gulf, a little bit stronger, still of a somewhat north to northeasterly direction, 20 to 25 knots now. Prince William Sound dropping down to around 10 knots out of a northwesterly direction. For the Kodiak Island area and in, in Alaska Peninsula, we have starting at Kodiak Island easterly flow, 20 to 25 knots, becoming more northerly and eventually more northwesterly as we get further to the west along the Alaska Peninsula, 20 to 25 knots there. Seas as high as 12 feet on the Pacific side. On Friday, flow over the Alaska Peninsula still out of a north to northwest direction, 15 to 20 knots bearing side, 20 to 30 knots on the Pacific side. Around Kodiak Island, north to northeast flow around 20 knots. Seas as high as 12 feet on the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. On Thursday for the Aleutian Islands, northwesterly flow 25 to 30 knots for the central and eastern Aleutians. As we move out further to the west, flow becoming more southerly and out by the Shimya area, southerly flow 30 knots there with about 9 feet for seas. On Friday, flow out over the western Aleutian Islands out of a southerly direction around 30 knots, seas 12 to 14 feet. As we move back to the central and eastern Aleutian Islands, southwesterly flow becoming more westerly as we get closer towards the Unalaska area. 
and speeds anywhere from 20 to 30 knots, strongest on the Pacific side, seas as high as 12 feet. Along the west coast of the state, primarily a northerly flow component, uh, primarily 15 to 20 knots, but a little bit stronger there by St. Lawrence Island, northerly flow 35 knots there, with the seas highest there as well, around 9 feet. So we move into Friday, a flow primarily out of that northerly direction again, 20 to 30 knots up by the St. Lawrence Island area north of Nunavik Island. But as we drop down south of Nunavik Island, flow diminishing a little bit around 15 knots there. Seas highest out by St. Matthew and St. Lawrence Island up to around 10 feet. Up along the Arctic coastline, primarily northerly flow 30 knots along the coast and then down the west coast of the state around 35 knots. Then on Friday along the west coast, Pretty similar, 25 to 30 knots, but dropping down as we get further to the north, only around 10 to 15 knots there, and becoming westerly as we get closer towards the Beaufort Sea, around 20 knots. Taking a quick recap of tonight's weather, we'll start off in the Panhandle area. We're going to have some rain showers throughout much of the Panhandle as we get further towards the interior locations, a little bit colder there, so it's expecting that rain to mix with snow. We'll also have some rain along the eastern part of the Kenai Peninsula, and due to low pressure by Kodiak Island, we'll see some rain for Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula, throughout much of the Bristol Bay area, and as we get closer to the YK Delta area, area expecting colder temperatures to have that rain mix with snow. Up in the central and eastern parts of the Brook range, Brooks Range, expecting snow up there, and then some blowing snow conditions all along the Arctic coastline and down the west coast of the state through the Bering Strait area down by St. Lawrence Island. For the Bering Sea, low pressure in the northern part of the Bering, bringing some snow throughout the Bering down into the Aleutian Islands as well. As we move into Thursday, we have a front pushing in from the west towards the western Aleutian Islands. Initially going to bring snow, but enough warm air to transition that snow over to rain throughout the day. Then for the Bering Sea, you're going to have some rain for the central and eastern Aleutian Islands out towards the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay area as well. Kodiak going to see some rain and up through the YK Delta area also going to see rain. But as we get closer towards the Norton Sound, Kotzebue Sound area is expecting more snow up there. Snow continuing through the Brooks Range up towards the Arctic coastline. With Alaska Weather, I'm David Kramer. Thanks for being with us tonight. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>